All right, so the Cougar is, or I should say, it was almost complete. We took it out for a test drive. We thought we had the timing in the ballpark. It's at 41 degrees, which is degrees, which is a ton. Um, but that's where it seemed like it wanted to run. Uh, we put some bigger squirters in it and uh, did some ancillary things to make it run better. But the customer came, went for a test drive. The car was about, I'd say at 130, 140, and he stabbed it and it coughed, it coughed a little bit. So, you know, Biz like, put, you know, did that deal. So I'm like, okay, well, it probably needs, it's either lean because it's cold or it needs a little more time. Which the timing doesn't make sense because it's already at 41 degrees, which is a ton for a small block for Ford. It should be maybe like 36 or something like that. So we go to drive it, and it's, this is after we put Posi in the rear. So it has more traction now. Customer was pissed <laughs> because this thing will not do a burnout. <laughs> yes. So, which is, he's not wrong because it should, any, any motor that's not like limping should yeah. be able to do a burnout, right? Yeah. So that's very uncharacteristic of a V8, an American V8 that can't do, unless it's like built in 1985, like during the small year, yeah. where it's like 200 horsepower. Um, so we're going to sanity check it. We're going to go out and try and do a burnout and, um, figure out why the hell this new, it's, it's new, it basically new heads, new cam, new everything. Um, why this thing won't do a, a burnout. So we never really try to do a burnout with it because it's not our car. We want to beat on it, but I did get permission from the customer for the purpose of tuning. We can actually, um, give it the beans, mm -hmm. right? And then um, we checked the compression. So, yeah, I was getting to that. So, I had Andrew check the compression. I'll insert that video here. Full throttle, cranking over. It's what is that? One one twenty, one thirty five, like one thirty five, one forty with the throttle blades open. Um and I was thinking there was something wrong, so I was like, Andrew, check the compression. And this makes it tells the whole story. So basically, it's 135, 130-ish PSI, which is super low. I'm thinking, I mean, it should be between 160 and 180. Mm. 210 is like, you know, race car status-ish. So that's why it needs so much timing. And the only way to make a little bit more power is to recurve the distributor. So we're gonna take it out, try to do a burnout, sanity chest to make sure everything's good, and come back. And we're gonna we're gonna time it according to the dynamic cylinder pressure that it has, which is 130 psi ish. I'm sure there's some cylinders that are a little bit lower and a little bit higher, right? Um, but that is like to put it in, to put it in in perspective. That is what you would find on a eight to one motor that makes 200 horsepower in 1985. It's like a TBI or like a uh, early fuel injection um, or like Rochester uh, quadrajet carburetor type situation. 305, you know, 120 PSI, 130. I mean, that's what it is. For a cam motor, you know, with heads, I mean, like I said, it should be 160 to 180. So you're, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty down on, on a compression. That's why it doesn't ping mm -hmm. when it's at 41 degrees. Yeah. Now, just because it doesn't ping doesn't mean it's making power. So we have to find a happy medium. So we're gonna time it. We're gonna recurve this, the distributor. We're gonna change the jets on the on the carburetor because the plugs are a little bit white. So we'll add some fuel to it. Lean is mean. <laughs> Lean is mean. <laughs> Lean is expensive. Uh, the, uh, and this is a vacuum secondary carburetor. So you can buy um, diaphragm springs that are lighter. So because we don't know if the, the secondaries are even opening up. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they were just barely cracking, but 
Um, the vacuum may be so strong on this where it's just basically, it's at a 114 lip center, so it's pulling a lot of vacuum. Um, so yeah, uh, that's kind of where we're at. It's a, like I said, customers pissed. Um, not pissed at us. We did our due diligence up to the point where we can actually, we know there's nothing wrong with it um, to the extent that we can tell. Um, so that's what we did initially was, you know, it had, came, it had a lifter tick, whatever. So, you know, diagnosed that and, and uh, figured some some things out and we had to check a bunch of things to see where it was at. Uh, but uh, so no matter what, we would have to, we would be where we are now anyway, when we, if we we're gonna basically put it through its paces. You would have to go through and check all those fundamental things to make sure everything was okay. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, we're gonna take it out and try to do a burnout and go from there. All right, so the car is still relatively cold, but I'm gonna do what he did so we can replicate the expectations. So he just basically punched it. And I'm gonna do the same. So let's see. So it didn't pop, but... So I had to stumble to it. But it, it is, like I said, it is a relatively cold. But that's what, that's how he drives. So you gotta tune it according to his expectations and how he would drive the car. Yeah. So we're uh, seeing things the same. These cars go, and I'll give it a quick floor. Yeah, now. So that's floor. So basically, just takes off pretty slow. Yeah, there was like a little bit of a stumble, but it picked up. So we just got back from the test drive, ran, I wouldn't say light years better, but as far as tuned, it runs great. It runs perfect. Now the burnout, it's a little struggling to do a burnout. So, um, let me back up a little bit. There you go. Um, all right. So Andrew and I are working on the Cougar again today and our objective again is to, um, allow it to do a burnout, basically tune it to the point where it can do a burnout, because right now it can't do a burnout. So that is the objective, do a burnout. So Andrew went ahead and took the distributor out, and uh, so we could, we're, we were going to um, put a bushing in the distributor to limit the amount of advance uh, curve when it was uh, during operation. Basically, if you locking limit it, it to, out. huh? Locking it out. Yeah, or, or lo not locking it out, but restricting it. That's what we're gonna do first, put bushing in it. Right, so make it so that it can only advance 10 degrees. So that way you can put 20, 26 initial. But because the compression is so low, I think this thing can start with 36 degrees right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is these weights here um, are designed to, to basically, Inertia. they use a centrifugal force. Yeah. And as the engine revs up, these weights move out and it changes the advance on the distributor. So this one has probably, you know, 20 degrees in it. And, um, but the thing is because the, the cylinder pressure is so low, it's almost like having a big cam. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill and put a little, little tiny screw, at least try to, um, put a little tiny screw through the weight, um, uh, ar the, the arbor here and, uh, basically lock it in place so it can't move. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Or we could also just take the weights off. 
I will, we'll figure it out. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet, but maybe pinch it here. I don't know. But uh, we're going to do a, a, a cost-effective way of, of locking it out because this doesn't have a kit that we have. So if it was MSD, you can buy the kit and um, you can just put the bushings in and then lock out tag, whatever. Uh, but this one, I think you can get it, but it's a little bit more, it's a little harder to find. So that's that. That's that. And uh, so I guess part of the reason why um, we have to advance the timing so far um, is the fact that the cylinder pressure is... I was like, that's the root cause, is the cylinder pressure is really low, it has a tight converter, and it doesn't have any gears in it, right? And it's a relatively heavy car. So I think this car probably weighs at least 3,500 pounds. Yeah, yeah, I would think at least. At least 3,500. So like 38, like, probably. I think a Mustang is like 28. Like this one here, like 65. Yeah. Uh, but it's, so your truck's what, 35? Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing it probably weighs what your truck weighs. You think so? Maybe. I mean, I could be wrong, but um, it could, it's definitely like 33. Mm, okay. Right. So it's, it's a heavy car. It has a tight converter and it has freeway gears, which is all the wrong parts, right, for doing a burnout, right? Um, and it has posi now, so that makes it worse. And the tires are wider, which makes it worse, mm -hmm. right? So uh, what we're gonna do is advance the timing, and what that's gonna do is if I can illustrate. So so basically, this is a piston, and this is out of LS. Um, when so if you had 130 PSI, when the piston's at top dead center, uh, the pressure that's created in the chamber, it basically, the more, the more compression you have, the more, the, the tighter you pack the, the oxygen and fuel uh, molecules together. Well, if you have very low compression, the space between each uh, atom gas molecule is a lot further apart. So there's called, it's what's called smolder time, flame front, and what happens is, it's like having a firecracker. If you put a firecracker in the palm of your hand or loosely and light it, it won't blow your fingers off. But if you hold it tight, it'll blow all your fingers off because you're trying to, you're trying to uh, restrict the, the, the gas from escape, escaping. Well, in this case, the tighter the molecules are packed together, the easier it is for them to share energy from one to another because it's a chain reaction because I think people, some people might, may think that when the, when the ignition takes place, the, it just blows up at one time. It doesn't. And uh, Andrew, we had a debate about this like what, a couple weeks ago. I wouldn't say a debate. Well, not a debate, but a discussion. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, the flame starts at one end and it propagates across the cylinder, right? So that takes time. So because that takes time, you have to light the, the fuel a lot earlier. So as the piston is coming up, the fuel, the flame is actually going from one end to the other. So let's say it's coming up to the top of that center here. It lights. And as it's lighting, the piston is still coming up. Well, once the flame starts to cross the, that, that plane uh, or across that surface, the uh it's starting to build pressure and at the point where it reaches top that center it's basically where the lion's share of the explosion is supposed to take place right so it's supposed to kind of start here propagate and then blow up right about you know maybe 10 or 15 degrees so as it's coming down that's when it really starts to take off right well if you do it too early then you're actually the timing would actually fight against the piston coming up so that flame starts to ignite at the very low point of the of the crank angle and uh, as it's, as the light, the flame is lighting, it's actually starting to build pressure against the piston. That's why having too much timing will actually slow your car down. So you don't want too much. Um, and if it's severe enough, it'll actually detonate completely in the cylinder because what happens is, as the flame is actually crossing that, that, that surface, the cylinder pressure is actually rising at the same time. So what can happen is, when the flame, when the pressure reaches a threshold, it can actually pre-ignite the field on the other side of the cylinder when your timing is designed to sit to, you know, compensate for the flame propagation across the, that, that surface, you can actually ignite the fuel spontaneously on the other side because the whole environment is actually changing and it's actually getting higher, it's, the pressure is increasing. So that's called smolder time. So the, the lower cylinder pressure you have, the, more, the, the longer the smolder time. Uh, so what we're gonna do is actually ignite the fuel a little bit earlier because the molecules aren't as actually tightly packed and it takes longer for them to actually cross to a point where they reach critical mass and actually, you know, everything fully ignites. So that's kind yeah, of- lower compression, everything moves slower, right? Everything moves slower, yeah. So yeah, because it's like, it's like almost like a nuclear bomb where it, it's, a, it's a reaction. So it's like having a marble, here's a good example. If you have a bunch of billiard balls, right? You play ball, pool, uh, pool right? Mm -hmm. And you're good at it, way better than me, right? So basically, if you pack all the billiard balls together and you hit them, what happens? It's they all break. explode yeah. and they all move, right? So that energy, gets transferred to each ball quickly. Well, let's say, hypothetically, let's say you did the, what's that thing called in the middle? Triangle. 
a triangle. Mm -hmm. So that I know, I guess it's a triangle. It's a shape of a triangle, right? So your triangle. Let's say you take the, the balls and you move them out one inch apart. So there's one inch space between all the balls, and you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Why? What's going to happen is the reaction is going to be a lot slower, and it's going to have a lot less energy. Because what happens is that at that initial hit, that that hits the first ball, the energy is actually impacted with that uh, to that. It hits a ball and the energy dissipates as it moves forward. Mm -hmm. So the, the further it goes, high, now let's say you did it and you space them out five feet, right? Basically, you would almost have no reaction because the energy that's, that the ball is, is uh, that's imparted into that ball is dissipated over time, right? So by the time it reaches the next balls, it would be all the energy would be gone, right? So in this case, if we were to uh, advance the timing to a point where we could allow the fuel to have give it the time to basically ignite so that way, you know, cause right now what's probably happening is ignite, well, let me finish my thought. So it, it ignite so that by the time it has, it's at top dead center, the, the peak pressure, the cylinder pressure is actually taking place. And so that's all it is. It's peak cylinder pressure versus a crank angle, right? If your peak cylinder pressure happens before your crank angle is at zero, right? At top dead center, then obviously you're gonna lose power. And even if it happens directly at top dead center, you don't want that either because the crank angle is like this. So it's gonna push directly straight down. So push it, right? the crank to yeah, the you want the crank angle to be like 10 degrees. So it's starting to kind of rotate over, you know? Yeah. So um, so that's kind of what we're trying to accomplish um, is make sure that the pressure matches the crank, the crank angle mm -hmm. and then um, go from there. But yeah, so we want to make, that's what we're going to do. And then, and also, so I, I'll do that. I'll drill the, um, the distributor and Andrew's going to actually install. So he's going to put two jets in the front or four jet sizes going to go up in the, in the primaries because the plugs are a little bit on the light side. And then we bought these springs for the uh, carburetor. So this carburetor is a vacuum secondary uh, holly, and you really can't hear the secondaries opening up. So these springs are designed to either delay or increase the rate of opening or the, the, the RPM at which the, the actual secondaries open, because if it's not a double pumper, right? So it's not, it just, it's not mechanical. So under certain loads and certain RPM ranges, those, those butterflies open up, and that's what enriches the fuel and actually um, increases the fuel density, right? So, or the air density. So... Uh, what he's going to do is we're going to see what's in there and then we're going to get a spring that's actually that, that complements this configuration. So we want it to open up about 1600 degrees or 1600 degrees, uh, 1600 RPM to like 5800 RPM. Right. So we're going to put one of these springs in and that should enrich the, the incoming um, intake charge uh, a little bit better. And then so we're, we're basically going to pull all this. We're going to do all the tricks in the book to get this thing to actually do a burnout. Um, you know, we, we did the, we adjusted the, uh, the squirters. Um, we did a bunch of different things. So the timing and the fuel curve and, and all these things. So I think at this point, it's just a matter of just doing it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll do this, the distributor and I'm gonna capture that on video. And then you, you can maybe capture what you're doing on the, um, the vacuum secondary uh, diaphragm um, and see if that uh, makes a difference. So. What they say in the instructions, like a long time ago that I read, is uh, is basically you keep going to a box, right? Mm -hmm. And then you back it up one spring. Mm -hmm. So the springs are different colors. There's white, yellow, purple, black. Uh, the white is the lightest. Uh, okay. So uh, that one is going to be, maybe we'll just, I like to just skip to the end, right? So let me just put the, the lightest spring possible mm -hmm. and see what it does. And is it favorable? Is it not? You know, whatever. The only thing we can do beyond that, what we're doing, is a shot of nitrous. That would definitely work. <laughs> Blow it up oh, like a sneaky Pete. Mm. Like a fifty shot. You take the take the, the nitrous bottle off your your LTR. Put it in here, mm -hmm. and you can do it, you know three hundred foot burnouts. But anyway, so that is the plan. So I'm gonna start drilling the, the distributor now, and then Andrew. I'll, I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with that. But all right, all right, cool. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is. Uh, take these springs off so I can look at the um, how much how many options I have for for locking the distributor out. Springs are actually pretty tight that are on there. Let's see here. So I got the springs off, the bushings off. And here are the weights. So let's see here. I kind of want to do is just, if I knew it would work for sure, I would just tackle it. But uh, 
I'm not certain that that would be the best, uh, the best approach. So what I think I might do, so basically this is the slot that it rotates. This is how much, um, uh, degrees, how many degrees of freedom it has. So that's the advance there. That's what that sweep. So I got to figure out how I'm going to limit it from moving. So I could either drill a hole through this into that and lock it in place, but I don't want to hit this, uh, reluctor wheel down here. So I don't want to interfere with that. And I need to be able to get a bolt on the other side of it. So, what I could do, I don't know. I have to think about it. What's up? Is that a fuel filter? Yeah. It seems to not flow well. Really? What do you mean? Just like um, I took the hose off the carp mm -hmm. and some fuel came out whatever mm -hmm. was in the line mm -hmm. but uh there's still fuel full like the filter's full but there's none coming out really yeah but the bowls are full right is it because the fuel the fuel pump has to push it through yeah because in order for the fuel to come out there are, there has to be uh it has to be displaced with oxygen or air so if it's a sealed system it won't want to come out it's like putting your your finger over a straw yeah. like and take it, your finger off it and it drops out, mm -hmm. same thing. Okay. But that's a good obser observation. So basically what I'm gonna do is, so this is gonna go like so, and I'm gonna drill a hole through this base plate or through the, the weight and then just bolt it. And it'll just keep it in place so it, won't, so it won't move. So that's the least invasive thing to do. And that's it, I'll put it back together. And then uh, we can see how it runs. So I gotta go find a drill bit that'll work. And then uh, go from here. All right, I got everything drilled. Got the bolt in there with the nut, and now I just need to put the other weight on so it's balanced. And it's uh, it's pretty tight, so I'm just gonna go here like this, and I'll just it'll look like it's basically stock. All right, so I got the carb off. I'm going to take the bowl, um, the bowl off, change the jets, and I'm going to change the, oh shoot, I'm going to change the uh, spring in this diaphragm. Sixty-five. Should be the same. Yeah, sixty-five. I would be like a. Um, sixty-seven. Sixty. Sixty-seven. Yeah, like a sixty-seven. And then do, uh, they're probably both the same. Or actually, the back might be bigger because there's no part, there's probably no part off. Yeah. Well, this has a, uh, uh, <clears throat> Sorry, your pump? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so do 67 and just go up to on the back as well. 67? Yeah.
All right, so the car is back on. We got the orange spring in and a 67 jet in the front and a 71 jet in the back. So we'll start from there. And the distributor's done. Yeah, so. So basically I just put a bolt through it. Put it down on the back side. Lock tight it on there, put everything back together, and so now it's locked out. So just gotta put the cap on. We need to index it. Time it. There you go. Not fully warmed up, but I'm gonna go ahead and stab it. Didn't ping. Yeah, it was better. A little bit better. It actually feels a lot better. I was like, is that for us? <laughs> Alright, so we just took out uh, the um, secondary uh, vacuum. What do you call it? Spring. Just, I guess it's a uh, diaphragm spring. So we're going to. It was a, What was in there? Uh, so in the, the, the orange? beginning, uh, clean. it had medium in it. Like okay. Starting out. Okay. Then we went to the orange. Which okay. is almost the second lightest. Okay. And then the white is the lightest. So you want to go from the orange to the white. Yeah. So when you could feel, now that may be a little bit too much, but we could feel the secondaries open up and the car got significantly faster. So we're going to do that. And then I don't know if we're going to change the squirter. Let me, let's change this because you don't want to change too many things at once. Let's change that and uh, let's do a parking stall test. And then, um, and see if we really need to change a squirter. If so, we'll change a squirter to like a smaller, if it bumbles or not, to a smaller um, orifice size. They make it pretty convenient. Yeah. It's easier to change that than the squirter. Yeah, it is. Less risky too. So I'll, we'll start it up, adjust the idle. It's not adjust the idle again. And then um, do like a parking stall test. Burn out. <laughs> it, it actually did a burnout. I know, I heard it. <laughs> so, um, the customer owes me a clean on my driveway. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's um, put the air cleaner back on and try one take the trial one. All right. We'll punch it. Still struggling to do burnout. So 
the last thing we have to do, let it cool down. We're going to check the plugs for color. And that'll let us know that the fuel, um, the air fuel ratio is good. And then we're going to put two more degrees in it. So right now it's at 36. Mm. We're going to put 38. And we're going to try it out again. Let it cool off and take for another spin and see if that will uh, yield us any better results. Mm. And if it doesn't, then basically yeah, it is. Dad water. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, if that doesn't do it, then it's going to need a component change. Mm -hmm. It's going to need uh, either a camshaft, as far as a more aggressive camshaft. Uh, and, well, it, you know what? The first thing is, it's still it's going to need a looser converter. Yeah. Even Actually, if you have a bigger. Yeah, it, even if you can, it makes it even more um, pronounced of an issue. So, uh, so we're going to let it cool, check the plugs, add two degrees, and go take it out again. So, so we got. All right. Want to do a foot break or? Yeah, let me see. Bye. Burnout? Yeah. Yeah. It kind of wants to do it? Uh huh. Yeah. But it definitely doesn't, as far as transitions, it's, I mean, it's smooth. Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty close. So that's, that part is really good. I just think you need to, you're still going to need a, a, a looser stall. Yeah. This is with two more degrees of timing and a, a, a one inch carb spacer. Does that might make a difference. I think it might be slower. It might be a little Yeah, I think it's a little slower. What's a little slower? Yeah. The thing is, I don't know if that's the timing or the spacer. It could be the timing. Should have brought it with us. Right. But, uh... Well, that's our, that's probably test. Yeah. So I think we should do is pull three degrees of timing out of it. And do uh, it. Yeah. Okay. Probably just guess. Yeah. Spacer off and reduce the timing at 35 degrees, and I think it's pretty much at its peak. Pretty much what it is. It's a lot faster, but it still doesn't dip around. Yeah. So in that regard, we failed. <laughs> and it's, I mean, I think if it was uh, not as warm, if it was in the morning when it wasn't as hot, you'd probably gain another five, ten, like five or six horsepower or pound, full pounds of torque. I think it would make a difference to it would actually do one. Yeah. But uh, it's, 
getting hot during the day, so and the motor is heat soaked, so yeah. But it is running way better. No matter what temperature it is, it runs good no matter what. So that's it is faster. So that's kind of what it is. Yeah, it runs better. Um, it doesn't stumble off idle. Nope. I mean, I basically floor it. To the, I put it to the floor. Yeah. Immediately, and it just it just took off. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's just a result of uh, having mismatched parts. Um, if it had a stall on it, it'd be much better. If it had a cam in it, it'd be even better. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it doesn't. Even having a roller would give you another 20 horsepower. Yeah. Even if it was the same uh, lift and duration. Yeah. So, but it does run really, really well, so that's, that's a win. Yeah. That is a win. I'm still going to try one more time. I try and power break it, but. I think the converter is way too tight. It's, too tight. it's way too tight. I mean, I think it has like an 1800 stall, so. Yeah. And I don't want to keep beating on it, just, yeah. For no reason. 